using a, going through a lot Penguin of different styles. Penguin Con 2015. Uh, Penguin Dolphin. Go over here to these uh, items here on the left. Let me just show you what those are. And let's say, uh, you know, yesterday I was using such and such a file. What you end up with here then are all the files that you accessed yesterday. And you can see by, uh, um, by the dates that are on the files, they're, they're all yesterday, um, with the exception of some folders. And probably because inside those folders are the files that were, uh, were used yesterday. But anyway, that's how, uh, uh, that's how you can make use of those recently accessed. You can also create your own custom uh, rec recently accessed uh, file entry by simply right-clicking over here and then using the timeline uh, uh, keel slave or KIO uh, protocol. Uh, uh, KDE has a number of different protocols that Dalton makes use of. For example, SFTP, which I just spoke about here with my SFTP uh, example. There, uh, there are, there's timeline, there are tags, there's a variety of them. I think fish used to be another one fish, that was yeah. used, and I think people, I don't use it myself, but I know that there are people that still use yeah, that. Yeah, I used to use fish a lot. Mm -hmm. That's great. I don't know the advantage of fish over just SFTP is. There is none. Okay. Just, is it like the syntax? It's it's easy. If you're doing it command line, the syntax is different. That's the only thing. For to make the connection. Okay. And then off on, the, off on the left there, you can see search for. Now, uh, by default, you've got uh, four different types of files that uh, Dolphin will, is set up to search for. Images, uh, video, uh, audio files, and then also what I, I rename mine. It originally says documents, but I, I, I broadened it out to just files. So when you click on that, what uh, Dolphin will do is it's going to then set up a... Uh, uh, a search item over here where you can then drop this down oops, for more options and then make use of the various uh, tabs here to uh, further refine your search if you need to find some files. Um, I try to be as organized as I can be, but there are times where I just got to go looking for things. And then just as an aside, uh, Recall, R-E-K-O-L-L, -L, is a really uh, powerful uh, application in KDE that you can use too to uh, search across your entire um, system for files that you're looking for. <coughs> Search. Oh, wait, that's the search tool. Right. Yeah, th these are the recently yeah. accessed over here. So let's say you know if you want to if you wanted to add an entry, then what you'd simply do, I could do something like this here, and then just say, uh, oh, let's see here. Oops, I'm in the wrong section. Um, I'm up here for recently accessed. So if I wanted to add an entry, then I would just simply put in timeline, and then um, two. 01403. I think I have something out there that that's old. I'm just going to put a test here. And we'll go ahead and save that out. There's my test. You can obviously customize the icon if you like, but I'm going to go ahead and run this and just see. Uh, I'll, I'll activate this side here. And yeah, see, I do have a file from March 24, 2014. It's an old uh, image that I took when I was at uh, a Detroit event. Can you go across file systems? Like if I have a sound to share on another server in my house? Yes, as a matter of fact, let me go back up here to the network. Um, you can see here, sound to share, you, you, what you need to do, I don't have it set up. I guess I'm talking about the recently added, like if I had a movie on a media server that was added two days ago, could I just go to I don't this know about the Dolphin, but with Linux, you can just mount a, a add a soundbar as a SIFS, and then it would treat it as a um, directory on your system. So the, those aren't recently it. added; they're recently accessed. So you, if you access and copy it on this computer, then it would show up in that list. But if you did it from a different computer and then wanted to see it, it probably yeah, right. It or if you use, I have not tested that. I have not tested that use case that you know, just described. Not. So I, really, I can't personally answer that question, but it certainly would be worth trying it you know, to see if, it um, if, it's, if it's mounted on here and you've accessed it. See, I, I, I found, I, I run Ubuntu with a GNOME desktop and whatever their, I, I think I use Thundar. And yeah, Thundar. If I double click on like uh, network and then double click on Windows networks and then double click on a SMB server out there, it will automatically mount it. So my file manager, I can see the files that are on there. But a lot of the commands that I do, like if I went into GIMP and I go to bring up a list of files, it only shows the files that are on my computer. It doesn't show them that are across. Uh, 
It should yeah, give you the option to select that share. Here's what? the question though, is it actually mounting it or is it just using um, I guess the, I don't know the, the difference. Or something. It shows up on my left yes. hand side as uh, after I do it the first time it's very quickly available. Right, but just because it's listed there, it's not necessarily mounted. Yeah. It's like you can do uh, in so you're, you're yeah, saying that we're going to be talking device. about the, the device. If I go to a terminal prompt and I type uh, the word mount, no, I can not be on it. Probably well, let me, let me just tell you what we're right. getting to that. So what I'm going to do is drive us back on track here because right. there's a lot of things I want to show you in the time yeah. that we've got. Um, and we're actually getting to the device area here in the lower left part of the uh, uh, places panel. Uh, what I've got here is a USB drive, a thumb drive that I'm going to insert into uh, into uh, my computer, and what should happen, I don't know if you just noticed this, but notice what just automatically happened over here on the lower right. uh, lower left side. Whoops, there we go. It appeared, but it's not mounted to you. No, it's not mounted, and you can tell it's um, it's not mounted because of this little, um, this little icon here, this little emblem. So once I click on it, though, it automatically is going to mount it, and then there, there we have the contents of it. Now, there's, I have another, um, I have another partition here that you can't see. Uh, what I've done with that is I've hidden it, and if you want to, if I wanted to show everything that I have available, show all entries, all I have to do is click this, and now you can see here I've got a service menu folder that was previously hidden, and again, this is kind of helpful if you've got things that uh, maybe you need to get out of the way temporarily because you're focused on a particular project and you're working a lot with your files, you can just temporarily hide the, the things that you're not working with. Um, you can also add, and we'll show, I'll show that in just a moment, but you can see down here I've got uh, this um, hard drive that I'm going to click on, and again, it just automatically mounts, and now it's available for you know, whatever I need it for. Um, the other thing that you can do, too, here is that, like we saw by, uh, uh, and I may have shown you, but if not, uh, this, is, this is my uh, separately mounted, uh, I'm going to see if I'm going to get it to go. Yeah, here we go. So what it's doing now is obviously asking me, to authenticate, which I will do. And then as soon as that, if I've done it correctly, um, now it just made my, including my potato salad recipe, uh, which I uh, tested earlier just to upload it, make sure everything was working fine. You can see now that those files are available to me. They're sitting out uh, on a uh, one-on-one -one server somewhere in the world. But, uh, but anyway, I just want to show you how you can have Various. Now, what is going to happen is for, uh, that's going to stay available to me then, and just like any other resource, I don't have to. I can I can leave this window go up to say home, and then I can go back to this later, and it's still there. I can click over here and then just click it, and you can see it's still available. So it's almost as if it's sitting there resident on my system, and I, I really appreciate that when I've got to get access to things that are not sitting on my system. Yeah. Okay. That was nice for that. Yeah. It's like, it's. Well, yeah, it's it, really it's universal, is. but like you could do SFTP home slash slash in, I think most KDE apps that should understand it. Yes, yeah, um, and that's why I wanted to show you that in case you've not done that and you're using Dolphin, if you've got files somewhere else remotely, you can set this up to access it. Now, uh, the other thing I want to show you is how easy it is to add to this uh, panel here. Let's say that I wanted to put my videos folder here. I can just simply uh, put it up here. And it's there. And then from here, you do have the ability to uh, do some edits. You can, uh, uh, I could add another edit if I wanted to, or I could ed uh, edit this one. Uh, change the icon, change the label, whatever I, whatever will uh, make it more intuitive for me or for whoever's going to be using the system. So, okay, I'm going to let that go. Um, but anyway, you can see uh, how powerful that places panel is and what it, and what it can do for you. Um, I'm going to go ahead and move over to the information panel, which is on the other side of the screen here. Well, what's kind of interesting about this panel, I really didn't pay much attention to it. I, I kind of used it for previewing files. Um, when you've got a, let's say for example, I have a, a folder full of pictures here, I think. And uh, yeah, a lot of the pictures that I used to set this up. And, uh, but anyway, you can see here by just scrolling down, and, uh, Non Rouge is a, that's a, actually an event. In, for some reason, I don't know why that is not, uh, let me go back here. There we go. You can see here by, again, just uh, hovering over it, I'm getting a little preview over in the uh, right-hand panel. And in addition to that, I'm also um, also retrieving some metadata. Um, I think a couple of releases ago, KDE moved from the uh, Nepomuk 
um, semantic desktop to Balu, although I think there's still some of that Nepomuk infrastructure <coughs> available, but they, they made a change. Um, I didn't have time to really uh, dig into that to find out why they made that change. Uh, all I know is that um, my Dolphin desktop, uh, or my Dolphin file manager, continues to you know, work just fine with me. Um, I also want to point out to you on the information panel over here on the right, you can see a couple of links. You do have the ability to add a comment for a particular file, although searching from the comments I have found is not as uh, reliable as uh, searching from tags. Um, I've gone ahead and set up a, uh, I've set up a tag, uh, a set of tags, and I want to show you how you access tags. What's nice about them, if you've used them in any other, you know, Twitter tags and all those kinds of, it's a good way to organize uh, um, files and other things that might be in different locations, but because they have a certain topic or they have something else that you want to kind of group them all together, you can use tags. Now, what I've done is I set up a very simple, uh, I've set up a very simple list of tags that uh, we're going to see right there. You can see I have one called bird, and that's just a picture of someone in a bird costume. Uh, I think it's just one file, actually. I also have BSD. Uh, I like BSD, but I, I tag these. And again, what you simply do is, um, is when you've got your file over here in a preview, <coughs> you simply click on the tag and add it. I'll show you how to do that really quickly. But uh, the key thing about these tags is I never really used them at all um, until just recently. But what, you know, as I said, what's nice about them is you can just collect um, items that are of a similar topic, group them together, tag them as you, you know, move through them. And then later you can just simply click on the tag and search that. You can also um, search for specific tags. Let's say, for example, I just want to look for the PSD docs. Then I would just simply type in, at the very top up here, I would type in uh, uh, Okay, thanks. I didn't even get a chance. 
I'm glad you asked that question. <laughs> so anyway, obviously on a screen like this, it's not very good, but uh, I think if you're just sitting there at your desktop, you'll have a better view of it. Um, okay, I'm going to go ahead and uh, move on to uh, KDE service menu. Is there another question? I'm sorry. Yeah, on the tags, can you search for, like, um, if it's BSD and or KDE or BSD and KDE? Yes, uh, according to the documentation, you can. I'm not certain that I have set up enough tags to show that. Uh, but one, you know, and actually, your comment though uh, brings up a really great thing that I wanted to uh, mention too about uh, these. Uh, this used to be these tags used to be maintained and indexed in a, I think an SQLite uh, database. However, a couple of releases ago, what they've done is they've now moved these to the extended attributes. So that if you do get adder um, for a particular document, you will then see what tags it has. These tags here. Uh, I wanted to see if I could change a tag, and so I think the command for that is set adder. I think the tool I had was called chatter. No, that's change. No, that's chatter. That's chatter for um, change attribute, but but there's a set attribute for these extended ones. Oh, okay. Um, that that um, I have not figured that out yet. I think it's possible. I have to build a name that it's known by to this, um, you know, to the attribute area. Um, Is that part of the file system? The, like are the tags attached within using the file system? The EXE portion? Yes. Oh, uh, okay. Yes, thanks. I just nodded you said. <laughs> Together, I think we got that question answered. Um, all right, so what I'm going to do, um, what I'm going to do now is uh, move on to the KDE service menus, which I really like. Now, uh, I do have a slide. I'm going to see if I can go back to these slides. It's a little disjointed here. Um, oh yeah, here. I just wanted to mention this. Um, you know, the, the KIO tag was introduced in KDE 4.10. You can kind of see we've covered this already. So I'll go ahead and move on to the next one. I'm sorry. Were you saying that our tags built in? You don't necessarily have to make up your own. Oh, you know, I don't. I have not heard that there are tags built in. Oh, okay. Um, I think what you, if you want to tag something, you're able to do that. Uh, well, at least uh, on one-on-one -on -one basis right. from the information yeah. panel. Okay. Um, there's no set of tags that you can just that comes with it. No, I, I'm not aware of it. Okay. Uh, but that, yeah, that'd be something kind of interesting to look into. But I'm not aware of it. Uh, one other thing I wanted to cover too is the folders panel. Um, and what is kind of interesting about this panel, and we're going to go back to, uh, uh, we're going to go back here for a moment, and I'm going to show you um, how you turn these on is through view, you go down to panels, and then you can see here that I've got on places information, I'm going to turn on folders, and uh, you'll see it'll appear on the left. Now notice that it is sitting, I believe, down, uh, where is it, is it on the left or something? Oh, it's a tab. I'm sorry. There it is. Uh, by default, it's going to show up as a tab, which may be convenient, or you may not even want to see this, or if you're just, you know, you really love the Unix file system hierarchy, you can have this available as your default. Now, uh, you do have the ability to pull this off because these panels right now are unlocked. There we go. Um, if I wanted to have this in line, I just simply pull it out and then I let go of it, and then you can see here, you can pull this down, and then you can. Uh, you can hide some of the things down below in your places menu. You have your file system uh, hierarchy over here on the left and then move over this way. I don't do it that way, but it certainly is available for you. And in keeping in spirit of KDE, which is customization of the wazoo, um, it's just another, just another way for you to uh, further customize your desktop. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to just move on here to the, let's see. I'm not very good at the uh, here. Okay, configuring Dolphin. Uh, I'm gonna, uh, I, I said I was going to do the service menus, but I got to tell you about this first. There are two places where you're going to configure Dolphin, two major places. The first one we took a quick look at, which is under settings, configure Dolphin. And then uh, this is where you can set split view. If you want to go into Dolphin uh, and have split view as your default, this is where you do it. Um, you, can, you can make your uh, location bar, which is this bar here at the top, uh, editable by default. You can also show the full path, which I do. And then the filter bar is that little search bar that we briefly looked at. So this is where you have, uh, where you make that change. There's also something up here called view modes, and this provides you with some basic functionality, but if you really want to set up something by default, what you need to do is you need to go up here to uh, view. 
and at the very bottom, adjust view properties. And what is really cool about this, uh, I don't know about you, but most often when I go into a folder or a directory, I, I kind of like to see my files first and instead of scrolling all the way down to the bottom. But by default, you can set up Dolphin so that when you go into a directory, your files are going to be at the top rather than your folder. They'll be, they'll be organized alphabetically, as you would expect to see, but you can have them set up that way. Uh, again, it's, it's your choice. Uh, you can leave it alone or not even touch it, and you know, you'll, you'll be just fine without it if that's, if that's your choice. You can also apply these properties just to the current folder, or if you wanted to cross the entire, uh, the entire Dolphin uh, universe, then you would simply do current folder, including all, or I mean you do all folders, but you can also specify. So you can see how in Dolphin you can have a profile set up where you have certain views depending on the folder that you're in. Um, if you've got a lot of graphics in a folder, you may want to have your preview set up. If you've got uh, a lot of files, you'll want to have details. But again, you can just see how that's done. You can change how, you're, how it sorts. I've got show folders first. I can, I can turn that off. Showing the profile path, um, that will allow you to see the profile in line there on the, you know, on the split panels. So. If you turn off that show folders first, are the directories then just going to be mixed in with the files alphabetically? No. Uh -uh. It's going to show, uh, let me just see here. It's going to show. See how it is right here when we go into doc? Well, that's not a good one. Uh, let me go back up to... Uh, uh, okay, you see how this is here? All of my, full, uh, my files are at the top. And then it, uh, it shows the folders below. Oh, yeah, that's, oh, that's a good point, yeah. So, no, but is there something saying for a show of files first? Um, I'm sorry, did I? She said just do the current file. Oh, is that what I did? The current so folder, you know, the folder. Oh, yeah. See, I just did the current one. So if I did okay. it, this I, I was just, it's like, so I, I know, like, show folders first, I generally do that. Enable, but it's like, wait, did I just remember show files? Oh, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. But then, you, yeah, you can change that. And then, yeah, yeah. show, again, yeah. showing groups is simply going to provide a visual uh, division alphabetically, so you'll have M, and then there'll be all your M folders grouped together, etc. So, but I, in the interest of time, I want to make sure we move on. Uh, but, uh, but anyway, uh, go ahead and play around with this and set them up, uh, you know, whatever way you think will work for you. Um, all right. Uh, when Dolphin is installed, you will, um, if you're like me, you know, you're going to play around with it and take a look at the right, uh, the, uh, right click on a file and you're going to see a, a short, uh, let me just show you here when we go back to the uh, presentation. <coughs> yeah, there we go. Let me just move down here. Oh, Dolphin function keys. Sometimes you want to have a split panel, but if you've got a lot of long file names, maybe you just temporarily want to go to a single panel, well then you hit F3 to, tank, uh, to toggle uh, split screen on and off. Uh, Dolphin also provides you with a terminal at the bottom, which you really didn't get into. Um, but you can toggle that. I'll toggle it on when we go back to the, uh, the interface. So uh, this is a very helpful, uh, very helpful set of uh, function keys so that you can uh, uh, customize Dolphin either temporarily, well actually mostly temporarily here. Um, so I just wanted to share that with you. But again, you can turn on panels, turn them off. Okay. These are all, most of these are toggle actions. Yes? What in the world is F6? What is that? Oh, let's go back to F6. I'll show you. Let's it's go back. Like the the Whoops. Yeah, I have to pick up here. Right. It's true. You like where you've been. See what I did? Look at look on the left, uh, above oh, the left yeah. panel. Oh. Yeah, I, I didn't know that. Usually, if you just leave that enabled by default and then click into it, it'll give you. It'll You're right. Right. Yep. And then you can go right to that. Yep. Yeah. Um, and. And also, one thing with shortcuts, given that this is a KDE application, if, say, you're used to, like, the conventional, or the orthodox file manager, sorry, I think the term is, like, the Midnight Commander or Crusader, it's another one that I use a lot, um, you can remap the key bindings there. Like, so you have your F1 through F10 as the Midnight Commander style shortcuts. You can do that. Mm -hmm. um, that is one of the nice things about KDE applications. Almost all of them have customizable shortcuts. Yeah, and just to add to what you said too, one of the things too about those places in that 
that we saw in the places uh, panel. Uh, if you open up any other KDE application, you're going to see that same list. So that can be very helpful if you've got maybe a folder of images or you've got some other uh, similar similar files. You can set that up, and then whatever KDE application you open, they're there available to you. It really would, would really be cool is if that if they had some kind of a standard across a lot of apps where I could be in LibreOffice mm -hmm. and see that same thing. That's just not the case. Um, yeah, KDE integration with LibreOffice isn't. Yeah. Um, all right, well, let me just um, get to this here. Uh, service menus. Now, when you when you uh, first access Dolphin after you've installed um, KDE or, at, or at, uh, the distro that has KDE as the uh, default desktop, uh, you're going to see this very um, small group here. You can see um, I've right-clicked, uh, and, and what you're looking at here is a, a, is a context menu there on the left, and then the smaller one on the, in the lower right area in the graphics portion just shows you, for example, actions, what's available. Now, uh, what, what appears there is going to depend on the kind of file that you've got selected because there are file associations. KDE knows that if you're opening a PDF and you've got the full uh, PDF service menu installed, you can simply click on one of those and you can concatenate two PDFs together. I did that as one of my little test things. I'm not going to do it today because we don't have time. <coughs> but yeah, you just highlight two PDFs and you click Merge. And boom, they, it takes a little, it takes a couple seconds, but it's going to merge it into, uh, or excuse me, into one document, one PDF, and that can be really helpful. Uh, they're, they're, um, you, the fourth bullet there shows you where these are typically located. Um, they're in uh, kind of the hidden KDE configuration file. If you turn on your hidden files, you'll find it, and then you can go go into it and take a look at them. But but by and large, service menus, in my opinion, make life easy. Um, I'm going to show you right here. Uh, you can see going into the uh, configure dolphin uh, earlier. You know we were under the general uh, category there on the left, but if you go to the services, you can see what's turned on and what's available. And again, if you've got the corresponding application installed, then that particular service menu is going to be available to you. Um, over on the left here, I want to, or excuse me, on the right, uh, under the third bullet, the you know, second sub bullet. Uh, in, in addition to doing this. At the very bottom here, I want to highlight it, uh, you can download new services. Uh, there are some really nice services that are available on kdeapps.org uh, that I've installed. Um, the, the one that I installed a few years ago called, uh, is called the KDE Image Manager. It, it would allow me to uh, right click on an image or a set of images and then resize, uh, convert, do a number of different things. Uh, there, are, there is a uh, service menu that will do that now, but what I really liked about the what was called Kim, the uh, KDE Image Manager, is that they were all nice, nicely grouped together. But anyway, you can do it there. You can also do uh, in the Debian system app get install KDE services. Uh, if you're, uh, I'm sure Yum install will work just as fine in RPM based systems. Um, I have not tested that, but uh, I'm sure I'm sure it's there. And then also, as I said down here at the bottom, KDE apps.org is another source for KDE service or create your own. I was going to, I, I at first was going to show you all how to create one, and then I realized I don't have time. Um, but let's go back, I want to just take you back to, uh, you can see here I turned that, uh, I turned that terminal on at the bottom, and it's going to mirror whatever directory you're in, um, it is going to basically, you know, you can see I'm in, uh, where am I here, in my downloads, I think, yeah, you can see here how it changes depending on where I am. the command that you used. Yeah, so you can see, that's kind of nice, way to... That, that's what I use the dolphin for. The only for. reason you use it for <laughs> is yeah. to get my is to get the path to my removable media. I'll click the removable media and then copy and paste the CD from here into the real terminal. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now um, I'm going to just simply click on this. There's also an open internal. There's probably like an open internal. Well, internal service menu. You can yeah you can set it so that the terminal is always there. Yeah. Um, or, what I, well, Actually, one of the service menus is probably going to be open terminal, or, uh, or I might just be thinking of Crusader and doing that. I, I don't know. Well, I think it's there. Yeah, open terminal here, service menu. Yeah, Crusader is another file manager, KDE kind of based file manager. It is, it's an actual, too. like, it, it's basically a GUI, like a KDE GUI um, Midnight Commander yeah. clone there. 
It's yeah. got some nice things going for it too. Oh yeah, and, and I, yeah, I think I've got that installed too. Yeah. That's another one I installed. I, just, you terrible. I know you mean that. I get it. I, uh, I also have been using Crusader mm -hmm. for a long time. Uh, so looking at this, uh, this is running as an ordinary user. Yes. The stuff you do in Dolphin. Yes. Uh, yes, but uh, and I don't see. Let me just see.